Hello, hello, everybody. Early Happy New Year. This is Louis, Louis Dordan Prix, and we're broadcasting live globally from <coughs> just outside Playa del Carmen, Mexico, where, where, where we are hosting our annual New Year's Eve retreat this year. Last year was in Bali, Indonesia. This year we're in Mexico on the Yucatan Peninsula in this beautiful, beautiful uh, ashram resort in the middle of the wilderness. So it's really cool. So <coughs> those of you uh, who are new joining us for the first time, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you to everyone here for accommodating this broadcast as well. And those of you returning, you probably know that I have a certain tradition program. We spend the first few minutes reviewing uh, the year that just uh, completed, uh, specifically with regards to the divine dispensation that I give each year on New Year's Eve uh, for the planet to guide humanity and the planet <coughs> and to harness certain energies to help forward God's plan for creation in the, in the best and most harmonious way. So last year on this very night, I proclaimed 2023 to be the year of giving. And I asked people to look, I asked everyone to look deep in their hearts and find more and more ways you can expand in all the various ways that you give, whether it's through tithing, whether it's through increasing your tipping, however much you tip, tip more, helping people out, buying meals for people who are, you know, in need and, uh, or in hunger. Uh, helping people financially in ways that you might not have or to a larger degree. You know, when you know someone is saving up for something, to make a donation or help someone pay for a trip they're looking for. Also in service, you know, service, being in service is part of giving. So finding, you know, expand your capacity to help others, to serve others. Um, you know, we're living in a time now where, where greed and avarice and corruption is just at an all-time high, selfishness, self-serving. Um, you know, it's just sense gratification. These things that are really, that undermine humanity and undermine community. And so I, I invoked this, this, this blessing and, and delivered this dispensation to help transmute and offset this ever-increasing, um, you know, devolution of the species by asking and inviting people to create the polar opposite of that by really, really striving to find ways to expand in all the various ways you give and to create and find new ways of giving that you might not have thought of before. And the impact that has on the planet is so, so profound. And so we just spent uh, 20 or 30 minutes here in our group gathering uh, asking different people to share and reflect on how they did that, uh, how that played out in their lives, where they chose to, didn't choose to, where they succeeded, where they failed, where they found great, great rewards and personal uh, blessing and expansion uh, of heart, of consciousness, blessings in their lives that came from insisting upon within oneself to expand into greater capacity and willingness to give. And so a handful of people shared their experiences in, in ways that did and did not um, fulfill that and exemplify that. And it was really, really beautiful. So um, those of you who uh, were not with me in person and might have been participating in the broadcast last year, I hope that you did that too. And again, like all the divine dispensations I give, it doesn't mean that it's over now, that each one, they, they add upon, build upon each other. So I'm inculcating, striving to inculcate within people and within humanity uh, um, a development and or expansion of these beautiful divine character traits that uh, raise our light quotient and help us become greater, expressions of love, greater uh, emanations, walking emanations of love, uh, greater, more divine versions of ourself. Um, that's what the, the personal intent of this is. And again, the global intent is that this gets spread out far and wide and, and blesses others and helps uplift the planet and help offset where um, the opposite of those things or negative things are happening and affecting people in so many sad and tragic ways. And it really, really does work. 
uh, not only through the power of prayer and the power of one, but the, just the sheer power of giving. Um, and, and even more so when the giving is joyous and selfless, then that adds an expanded quality, um, a synergistic, expanded, exponential quality to the giving itself that is really, really um, very profound and, and noticeable and palpable. So, <clears throat> so that's what um, 2023 was, was all about. And we also took a little time, and, and I'm asking you to think about this in yourself beyond tonight, reflect on how you might have seen that play out in the, the collective consciousness. Um, obviously the, 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 the major arenas, uh, business, finance, politics, uh, and the world of entertainment, Hollywood, the most visible arenas, um, uh, fame and celebrity, these are the, the major arenas that are the most visible to the global population. And, you know, reflect, spend some time, maybe tomorrow, I know since we're approaching midnight here, but, you know, spend some time reflecting, and those of you in the room too, reflecting and thinking about, if you haven't already, where you've seen that play out in the world in positive and in negative ways, where there was a dearth of that and the cost and the price that was, that was paid or is being paid. Um, and especially in the positive, you know, take a look and see where you saw the, this year of giving really take hold and play out and have a, a really beautiful and positive and powerful impact on others, on countries, on peoples, on cultures, on the world, on consciousness, um, and in the media, social media. Um, look for examples there and see. Um, you know, there have been uh, a lot of cases as, as, as Mother Earth, you know, is stirring the pot quite a bit through this global warming and the, and the earth changes. You know, it, 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 one of the things that that engenders is uh, individuals, as well as groups and on a large scale, even countries going to help and bail out other countries and people helping each other in crisis, during floods, during famine, during droughts, during fires, and how people rise to the occasion. I remember there was the world famous and tragic uh, fires in Maui uh, that wiped a town off the map, you know, and a very historical town that went back several generations and how people rose up, you know, and just said, we're not having this. And people just came forward and donating enormous amounts of money. And, and uh, I don't know, I'm sure some of you saw and watched uh, on the news uh, that tragedy unfolding. And um, since the entire town was gone, um, those people had nowhere to go they, and they had no belongings, they had no clothes. I mean, because the fire was so huge and so fast and so vehement that everything burnt to nothingness. So people, only, the ones who lived, uh, and most people did survive it, but the ones who lived, um, most of them just had the clothes on their back and virtually nothing else. And so many people on the island took entire families into their house and fed them and clothed them and allowed people to pitch tents in their yard and said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about what you've been through. Just we're here for each other. We're here for each other. And, and that was one of the most, uh, most profound examples of that, of the, the giving and the sense of family and community where people just rose up. But it, it happens all kinds of places. And that was one example that, that came to mind. And when people come forward in the generosity and, and all the countries who chipped in to help these countries at war, you know, in particularly the Ukraine and now in Israel, um, people just volunteering, volunteering. And even at the civilian level, so many people got on planes and said, I'm just gonna fly there and just do whatever I can to help. And that's the very essence, the spirit of what I was talking about in the year of giving, um, you know, in, in trying to reinvent the wheel and find new ways to give because that in turn, and that's not the reason for doing it. You do it just out of basic human humanity and love for others, but it blesses you in return as well. Um, your heart and consciousness expand and, and there's that, the, you know, the, I always say the, the joy of serving is the reward for serving. And the, the feeling that comes from that, knowing that however large or small sacrifice you made of your time, your money, your life, 
um, your way of being, how that helps and blesses so many people. So please keep, keep doing that, you know, as you do. Now, <clears throat> looking forward, looking forward into this year, you know, it, as, the, as the year rolls by and we approach the end of the year, I start meditating on and looking at what would really stand on the shoulders of that and couple with that and, and work in harmony with that. And as I said in the beginning, a few moments ago, you know, what we have seen and still see developing in the world, there's just so much disconnect. There's so much breakdown of family unit. There's so much disconnect from one another. People lost in their social media, lost in their phones, and you know, and there's so much. Um, there's been such a growing, excuse me, nature of self-serving interest, of selfishness, um, of separation. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And yeah, the, the other, the positive opposite grows too, but the other has become so much more visible. And there are underpinnings in that. One of the, the main underpinnings of that has to do with the nature of the human ego personality, which is just ruled by, don't tell me what to do, it's the, the nature of the human ego personality is one of willfulness, defiance, belligerence, uh, disobedience, um, selfishness, and, and the polar opposite, the divine human, the Adam Cadman, the divinely perfected human, is one of giving and selflessness and generosity and compassion and empathy and godliness and caring and kindness and nonviolence <laughs> And so that's the direction we all need to be growing more and more of. Some people are doing very well there in that direction and, and some countries are doing better than others, but that's the direction we all need to be going. And so going to the root, I look at, as I said, the nature of the ego personality is don't tell me what to do. I want what I want and no one's gonna stop me. And so that consciousness is what creates this separation and this wide polarity between the divine truth of who we are and how many people behave and run their lives. And so no more fitting or perfect could there be of a divine dispensation to, to counter that, to transmute that and help transcend that would be then what I'm about to speak by proclaiming 2024 as the year of obedience. And this is the single greatest, most powerful um, bastion for the human consciousness uh, to conquer um, and, and, and master, to invoke and, and then become those divine character traits I just listed and described. That's the, the single greatest and most important thing. I mean, there are so many others that are important. Faith, prayer, service, of course, selflessness. The kingpin though, the keystone in the dam is obedience. It is the last thing to which the human ego personality will succumb, the very last thing. I'll give you everything else. <laughs> I'll serve, I'll give money, I'll help people, I'll do this and that, but don't tell me what to do. Whereas the, that's the mission statement of the human ego. The mission statement of the soul is, how may I serve you, Lord? It's one of surrender and selfless service. And the mission statement of the ego is, don't tell me what to do. It's one of defiance and disobedience. Those, as you can see, are polar opposites. And so the way to transcend and move through that and master is through obedience. And if people, if and when, people will be willing to develop stronger and stronger and greater. And for some people, just it by itself because it's non-existent. There's some people who are living at the ultimate of disobedience and defiance. But whatever level you're at, make your goal and your focus this year. I do glance at the time because we have a countdown coming. Make your goal and your focus this year. I invite you and beseech you to be your mission statement to become more and more obedient. What does that look like? Well, obedience comes in many, many ways. Obviously, the be all and end all, the highest is obedient to God's will. Um, 
the right use of will, listening to your heart and, and following that, no matter how alone you might feel, how unsupported you might feel, um, how outlandish it might sound, how scary it might feel. But there's also, there are also other forms of obedience that are important. Obedience to the truth, obedience to law. You know, look in the microcosm as well as the macrocosm. If you're one of those people who guns it at yellow lights, stop doing that. If you're one of those people who runs red lights because you feel like it. You know, breaking the law in subtle ways, throwing trash on the street rather than in, in, in bins, not recycling when you know it's the right thing to do even if you don't have a recycled bin, you know, or just tossing it in the bin, you know, the trash bin because the place you're at doesn't have a recycled bin rather than taking it home. Those are all forms of disobedience and defiance. Because why? Because you know in your heart what the right thing to do is. The heart is the seat of the soul. The heart always knows. So it's not just the big things of running red lights that are glaring disobedience and people still do those, but find all the nuances of disobedience in your character. There's, again, like you look at relationship. Now, I hesitate to use the word obedience to a partner or a spouse, but the word does apply obedience to um, your agreements. That's still obedience. I don't mean obey your partner and be that person's slave. But when you have a, a relationship with someone, you have an agreement. If it's not in paper, you still have agreements, terms that you promise to live by. Marriage vows, you know, relationship vows, agreements with roommates, agreements with employers. So if you chronically come in even five minutes late to work, that's disobedience and defiance. And that takes away from your divinity. It detracts from you and it impedes and halts growth. So I'm not asking you to be compulsive or obsessive, I'm not asking you to be nitpicky. I'm asking you to be on a treasure hunt, on a treasure hunt to discover more of your divinity and the way of doing it this year more so than ever before is to discover all the arenas and ways that you have been subtly and not so subtly disobedient and change that, become obedient, and you will see blessings like you cannot imagine. Now, the will of God is, is seated in the throat chakra, and those who understand chakras and, and mandalas and meridians and all that, the um, throat chakra, um, the color of the throat chakra is, is sapphire blue. And so I've come up with a crystal this year to anchor and hold this energy and empower it like an amplifier, a beacon to work with, to um, connect with the energy of obedience and help you become more obedient and keep your focus on the will of God, which is anchored and housed in the throat. So, and that crystal that I've chosen this year is lapis lazuli, uh, which is that sacred Egyptian stone so beautiful and it has that deep royal blue color of the throat chakra which also um uh the throat center obviously is the center of communication and the center of truth and the first ray those who study the chohans of the seven rays the first ray which is guided and overseen by lord el morier and archangel michael is all about communication and truth and honest upholding honesty and truth and righteousness and integrity um, and so these are the elements and the essence of this year that embody and embrace this, this mission to become more and more obedient in all the many ways you can in your life. And so use this really powerful sacred stone that was, you know, that was everything in, in the ancient golden civilization of Egypt. Uh, to this day, it's still all over the, the temples and, and Pharaoh's tombs. It's a very, very powerful crystal, and it will help you um, stay connected to, to truth and give you reminders when you step outside of it. Ask it, program, you know, when you're working with it, to, and ask of your higher self. Ask of, excuse me, God and Guru, if you have one, the Lords of Karma, you know, show me, give me, you know, let me, when if I step out of alignment with integrity, with truth, if I step, if I'm going in a direction of disobedience, ask, be proactive and ask to have rakes placed in the grass so you can step on that rake and feel the thwack on your forehead as a gentle reminder, say, okay, shift gears. Ask for signs or symbols. I'm saying that metaphorically. Obviously, I don't want someone getting whacked in the forehead with a stick, but um, ask for 
accountability to be shown to you when you are not it. Um, also, <clears throat> I would strongly offer, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> those of you who don't know it or have not seen it or memorized it, um, there's a, a piece of prose that I wrote decades ago called The Invocation of the Christ. Um, and it is an invocation. You're calling to your own higher self, your own God self, to call you to account and hold you accountable when and if you refuse to hold yourself accountable. So you're literally invoking your I am presence, your God self, the, the God within you, to say, override my free will if I'm using it in non-accordance with God's will and show it to me. And if I still choose to disobey and be defiant, then override me. Let God's will reign supreme uh, in spite of my non-loving choice, in spite of my defiance and belligerence and, in, and indignance, because I know in my heart that's not the truth of who I am. And I truly, truly want to be love and greater love in every moment. So you can find that on our website, louis.org, if you don't already have it or know it. It is one of the most powerful spiritual tools you could use, and you will see and feel its effects in your life. Um, so, um, obedience also to employers. You know, uh, I talked about people who come in five minutes late, well, I'm on time. Well, five minutes late is not on time. You know? <laughs> It's not on time. Five minutes early is actually on time. Uh, when I was in my training with the masters, they used to say, if you come in, you know, if, if a session begins or class begins at nine and you come scrambling in at nine, you're actually late. You want to be there a few minutes early to get centered, grounded, composed, you know, take a few deep breaths, gather your thoughts, set your intention for the day. If you're walking in at the second you're due, you're late. And five minutes late is egregiously late. So if you wanna be technical by the letter and the spirit of the law, five minutes early is on time. And don't make excuses for yourself. That's another part of being disobedient. And look for the ways, subtle and not so subtle, that you make excuses for yourself. And it's, it, the ego is so wily and cunning. The ego is as wily and cunning as the soul is loving and masterful. It truly is but just a little bit less, because <laughs> the soul always stays a little bit ahead. But it's very cunning, and it's amazing how many people uh, succeed, very paradoxically, masterfully, at deceiving themselves and deluding themselves with these justifications people make. And justify, if you look at word etymology, is the act of making oneself right, which is the mission statement of the ego, and it always has to be right. So when you catch yourself justifying your non-loving actions, you pretty much can be assured that you're not in non-alignment with God's will. Um, that's another, another tool to catch yourself. When you find ways to justify being right, pretty safe to say you're not in alignment <laughs> with the truth, with the right use of will, with God's will. So you have your assignment this year, you have your blessing, your invitation, and you will see the fruits, again, watch in social media, in the media, in politics, entertainment, business, government, uh, institutions, um, and in lives around you and in your own life. Watch how this plays out this year. You will see it. You will see the price for disobedience is going to amplify exponentially this year because of this dispensation. And you will see the blessing of obedience, of greater and deeper and more unabiding you know, uh, obedience to truth, to love, to God's will, to oneself, to our brothers and sisters. You will see blessings greater than you've ever seen before from the simplest of acts. And you'll see that polarity get wider and wider. Um, and, and, and ask for that, invoke that, yearn for that, ache for that, so that you can be shown, so it becomes easier and easier to make that kind and loving choice, the divine choice to become obedient, because that is the gateway. That is the gateway to merging with divinity, to becoming uh, a greater human being and a more loving human being. Obedience is really the fast track. And as I said, it's the last bastion for the ego to conquer, and the last thing to which the ego will succumb and yield, which means, you know, it's. The, first place to go. That's the fast track. 
the areas of your greatest resistance are the areas where you most need to go and lean because the areas of your greatest resistance are the areas and arenas where you live furthest from God. So with that, beloveds, I will leave you. We're going to take